Hey everybody, David here, and today is Batman Day, and so I thought it would be a good time to do my favorite Batman portrayals in live action from worst to best. So let's get through this. At number seven, I have George Clooney. This is no shock to a lot of people. George Clooney is definitely the worst portrayal of Batman to date on film. Now, not to really blame too much of the actor, because when you read behind the scenes of what happened with Batman and Robin, it sounds more like a studio uh, situation. They wanted to sell toys. Joel, they told Joel Schumacher, hey, let's make this more cartoony, let's make this a giant toy commercial, and that's what Batman and Robin turned into. I would have always liked to see how George Clooney as Batman would have been if he was under a different film or a different director uh, directing him, because George Clooney, whether you liked his portrayal of Batman or not, he is a great actor in other things that we've seen him in. And with that, I think he would have played Batman very differently if under, like, let's say, Christopher Nolan's leadership as a director. I think it would have been interesting to see how George Clooney would have played it. Could he have been the best Batman ever? Well, we'll never know. But right now, unfortunately, he's always going to be considered the worst. At number six, I have Val Kilmer from Batman Forever. Val Kilmer, I thought, played a really good Bruce Wayne. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> under Schumacher's reign, uh, we didn't get the Batman we deserved. Even though he wasn't campy like, uh, or as campy as George Clooney's Batman, he was a very bland Batman in my opinion. He tried playing it a little bit like Michael Keaton, but ultimately wasn't interesting as Batman. I actually always thought he did a better portrayal as Bruce Wayne, and that's what I'll give to Fel Kilmer on this one. So bravo, sir. You actually succeeded in half of what Batman is. At number five, I have Adam West. Now, some of you are probably wondering, how come you got Adam West over Val Kilmer and George Clooney, two great actors? Well, let's remember, the Adam West portrayal of this character was in 1966, and if you watch that show, that show was meant to be campy. Now, yes, we can use the same argument, well, maybe Batman and Robin was meant to be campy. Yeah, but it doesn't fit with today's style and age of what... Uh, we look for in a superhero movie. So with that, Batman from 1966 actually fit that time. And the way they were portraying Batman was that they were playing it straight, even though if you're an adult, you know that they weren't taking it as seriously as we... Uh, as kids thought it was, you know, kids always thought that show was meant to be taken seriously, but the adults knew that, no, this is supposed to be a comedy, this is supposed to be a good time, we're laughing at all the inside jokes and everything. That's what makes that show actually stand out even today. I still think when you go back and watch it, it's still as enjoyable today as it was back then, uh, if you know that it wasn't supposed to be taken seriously. At number four, I have David Mazuz. The young man who, the young actor who plays Bruce Wayne on Gotham. I'm kind of cheating here a little bit because on Gotham, Bruce Wayne is not Batman yet. But to be fair, he is one of the main characters on the show. And he is growing into that role. And I feel as a young Bruce Wayne, just like how Smallville was about young Clark Kent before Clark Kent becomes Superman, and then by the end of that series, he finally does become Superman. There are still characteristics that you recognize in young Bruce Wayne in this show that will eventually become the Batman that we will eventually know. We see him growing slowly into that role, and I am looking forward to, uh, if this show makes it 10 seasons, who knows, that's how long Smallville took, uh, maybe we will see David Mazuz one day in the bat suit. I would I would think it would be an interesting um, uh, thing to do if they ever do get to go that far with the series. I don't know. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but from what I see so far, two seasons in, now we're getting into season three. You know, I think as an actor, he's doing a really good job at growing into that position, not just as an actor, but as the character as well. Number three, I have Michael Keaton. I think Keaton is great as Batman, and a lot of people will kind of maybe put him on 
the top of his list. I, I seen a lot of people say Michael Keenan is still the best Batman for them. Uh, but if you really take out your nostalgia glasses, which I think a lot of people keep those on when thinking about Michael Keenan, yes, he is really good. I wouldn't really argue with people that had him in the top at number one. Um, because there is an argument to be made for Michael Keaton. He doesn't do a grisly Batman voice, but, you know, I think he plays it really good. I like the whisper. I think his portrayal of Batman is the best. The reason why I have him at number three, though, is because I feel his Bruce Wayne is kind of too weird. Um, for a matter of fact, when you see somebody hanging upside down sleeping, that should already scream, this guy is Batman. I don't care. Look, the guy could be awkward, that's fine, but he's too awkward. Awkward like, and it's not a surprise to me that Vicky Vale would start investigating him because even she thinks he's weird. It's a shock that nobody in the police department thought, hey, you know what? This Bruce Wayne fellow, he's a little awkward. Maybe we should investigate him. And they would find out he's Batman, but Vicky was the only smart one in this movie. I'm surprised Alexander Knox never found out. But for what it's worth, you know, it's not too big of a thing. It's a little nitpick for me. But uh, for, for what it's worth, though, I take Michael Keaton over any of the actors that I have already talked about, specifically Val Kilmer and George Clooney. So, yes, for a long time, Keaton was the best. At number two, I have Christian Bale. Christian Bale is my favorite actor to date. I, actually, out of all the actors on this list, I would say he is the best actor. Uh, for that matter, he is number two because, look, I love the way his portrayal of Batman was played. I think it has been the most true to the comics. And, you know, unlike a lot of other people, the voice did not bother me. The Batman grizzly, you know, I'm Batman. That did not bother me like it seemed to bother so many other people. But let's face it, he was a great actor, not just as Batman, but as Bruce Wayne as well. And if you take out the grizzly Batman voice, you know, I think we can say that this is probably the most accurate. This is a Batman that does not kill, unlike the other Batmans. Uh, this is a Batman that strikes fear into, you know, criminals everywhere, even if you're not scared of him because of the voice. The criminals in the movie are scared of him, and this is a movie. Let's also remember that, guys. We're supposed to have a good time with movies. And, you know, yeah, I thought Batman worked well. We got to see a little bit of his detective side in these films, Christopher Nolan's Batman films. We got to see the evolution of this character becoming Batman faster than David Mazuz is, obviously. But uh, we also get to see him fighting crimes, solving crimes in The Dark Knight, and then we finally get to see him retire in The Dark Knight Rises. And that's why I also consider it one of the greatest, super, the greatest trilogy of all time. That's right, I'm the one that will say, I like it better than the Lord of the Rings, The Godfather, and Star Wars trilogies. I love those trilogies too, but the Dark Knight trilogy is my all-time favorite. I think it's the perfect trilogy in every possible way, mostly because I loved Bruce Wayne, aka Batman's character journey throughout the trilogy. I loved it, and I thought it ended great, and I thought it started great. Finally, at number one, I have Ben Affleck. That's right, we only seen him in Batman v Superman, and we saw a little bit of him in, in uh, Suicide Squad as well this year. I think he is the best portrayal of Batman. Now, you're probably wondering, but David, you like Christian Bale's acting performance better? You even admitted, like, you, you thought Christian... Yes, but the thing with Christian Bale... <laughs> you guys are gonna call me a hypocrite or something, but I don't care. Um, Christian Bale's Batman voice, even though I don't mind it, I will admit it's not as intimidating as Ben Affleck's Batman voice. Now, I'll agree with people. I don't like the idea that Batman kills, but he is intimidating. You can't deny that. I feel I would be scared to, you know, cross paths with Ben Affleck's Batman. And I don't know if the killing thing has... It's not just the killing thing, but how he handles criminals. Uh, we find out in Batman v Superman, if you watch the uncut version, the ultimate cut, whatever, um, it's revealed that Lex Luthor is branding people 
in prison uh, to frame Batman. Because when people are branded with the bat symbol, uh, people are killed in the prison. Uh, but we find out, like I said, in the uncut version, uh, Lex Luthor is the one doing that, is involved with that. Batman isn't doing it because we even see at the end of Batman v Superman in the uncut version that he's even about to do it to Lex, but he can't because he's not a full out killer, I guess. Um, only when there's a lot of people involved. I don't know, but let's face it, that action sequence where Batman breaks into the, the warehouse to save Martha, uh, that is a great scene. And like I said, he is the most intimidating Batman we have so far. And I loved his portrayal, and I can't wait to see Ben Affleck direct his own solo movie because he is a fan of the comics, and we are going to uh, see how he will handle Batman and it could probably be even better than Snyder's and from what I've been hearing for this new Justice League movie they are going to explain why Batman killed maybe he's gotten tired of you know not killing because he realizes well these villains you know they keep breaking out of prison anyways I don't know what the explanation will be we'll be finding that out next November it's going to be really cool and I can't wait to see more of this Batman and I want to see him interact with Jared Leto's Joker because even though Jar Jared Leto's Joker is my favorite Joker it would be interesting to see how Batman would tackle this guy so guys that was my top, you know, well, Batman actor portrayals from worst to best. Uh, do you agree with me? I think a lot of people will have somewhat something similar. Uh, don't be harsh on Ben Affleck just because he was in a movie that some of you might not have liked. Because if you just look at that portrayal, I think everybody can agree that Ben Affleck as Batman was one of the highlights, even if you were disappointed. So, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, check me out on Twitter, Facebook. I'm going to try to do a podcast today. I don't know of what, but we'll see. And until next time, guys, happy Batman Day. That's why I did this. Take care.